Okay, so can you guys hear me? Good evening, like I said once again. Please let me know in the chat if you guys can hear me so we can get going. Okay. I'm getting clears from one person. I need everybody to let me know they can hear me. All right, now, like I said, this session is for beginners, for people that do not have a demo or people that don't know how to use the MT4 platform that we use to trade, okay? So the, the instructions, like I said, have been posted on Telegram, uh, on the channel. If you can't find it, uh, just let me know. I'll, uh, I'll get them to you again. Complete screenshots with instructions on how to install them as a Trader 4 platform. And after you've installed it and downloaded it, it should look like it looks on my screen right now. Okay. All right, now that's step number one. The second thing you need to do is you need to register a demo account. Okay. If it looks like this, it's not connected. As you can see, it says no connection at the bottom. That's because there's no account that has been created. So to do that, go to file. Uh, don't worry about taking notes. I'll make the, I'm recording the session as well. I will make it available to you guys so you can listen. All right, so first thing, go to file and go to open an account. You should click under where it says demo. You see where it says address, it says capital index demo or live. You wanna make sure that you click on demo and then click next at the bottom. Okay, if you already have a trading account, you can just log in using your login details where it says existing trade account. Since we don't have one, we are saying new demo account. You see where it's defaulted. Make sure it's clicked on new demo account and then click next. Okay, as you can clearly see, I've registered with Capital Index before, so some of my personal details are here. Okay, so first three numbers of my cell phone number on the side, and then the rest of them here. My email address. Okay, let me just quickly change that. Okay, so my email, Menzi at Okay, now, if you're gonna be using this one where it says type, you can go to CFD USD if you're gonna be using the capital index one, but most on most brokers where it says account type, it'll ask you whether it's demo or live, you will choose demo, okay? Now, where it says deposit, you wanna make it the smallest amount available. It kind of makes it a bit more realistic. You don't want to be trading with 500 or 5 million, $5 million in your live account. It's not realistic in your demo, I mean, sorry. It's not really realistic to the amount you're going to be starting with. So let's just go with the smallest one here, which is 3,000. The leverage you can leave as default. It should be defaulted to 1 is to 200. Most brokers, it's defaulted to 1 is to 100. Okay. You can leave it like that. And then you always have to, I, you always have to agree to subscribe to the newsletter. You don't have an option not to subscribe. Okay, so once all your information is filled in, click next. Okay, as you can clearly see, there's the login details, there's the password, and then I click on finish, and it should connect my demo now. Okay, as you can clearly see, at the bottom here, it said no connection, but as you can see now, it's, co Incoming mail. it's connected, and there's some stuff happening, okay? You're gonna start seeing stuff still now. My charts are live and they are real market conditions. Okay, so that's how you register a demo. Now on your screen, or rather on my screen, you should see four pairs. It's always these four. That's your EURUSD H4, GBP USD H4, USD CHF, USD JPY. Okay, so we'll get to the charts in a little bit. The first thing I want us to discuss is that over there. You see where it says market watch? That's the first thing I want us to look at. Your market watch is where you go to select your currency pairs, okay? So that is where you find any on all currency pairs. If I click on the first one, uh, if I put my cursor there, first one, it says USD, US dollar Swiss franc. 
Second one is GBP, USD, and so forth and so forth. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is you want to highlight any one by clicking on it just once. And then you want to right click on the very same one that you've highlighted. That will pop up that window. You want to go and click on show all. Okay. This will ensure that every currency pair your broker has or is making available to you, you can have or you can find. Okay. So once you click on show all, you can close the market watch. As you can see, market watch, there's a small X there where you can close it. So I'm going to go ahead and close it. Okay, next is your navigator. So as you can see, it has my details here. It says Capital Index 74 accounts, Capital Index demo. If this was a live account, it would say live there. That's my demo account number and my name. And then you will find certain things down here, things like indicators, expert advisors, and scripts. Okay, expert advisors are what we call EAs. They are automated trading systems. So if you ever hear somebody speaking about a trading robot, that's what they're speaking about right there, the EA, okay? So if you load any EAs on your platform, they will show up under here. There's something called scripts that we will make available to you guys as well that we use when we trade. They will be found here under scripts, okay? So that's your navigator window. Do you need it now? No, you don't. So whatever you don't need on your chart, you need to close. Okay, I'll show you where to find everything. So we're gonna go ahead and close that. Now, single most important thing is your terminal. See that small little window at the bottom here? That is your terminal window, okay? It's got some tabs at the bottom here. There are two tabs that you need to pay attention to. It's the trade tab, which is the one that's defaulted on and it's the account history tab, okay? Now, the trade tab, I'm just gonna go ahead and, I'm gonna go ahead and place a trade here on EURUSD. I just wanna show you guys how this thing works. Okay, hold on, there we go, buy. Okay, what I've done now is, okay, that's not how, to, that's not how you take a trade, by the way. I'll show you how to take a trade properly. But as you can clearly see, now that I've placed a buy on EURUSD on the H4 chart, on my terminal under the trade tab, this is what you now see, okay? All the information I need about my trade is here. The date, the time that I took the trade, the type of trade that I took, buy or sell, the size. Now size is what we call volume or lot size. I will teach you guys that as well. But that's the size, that's the risk, basically, how much I'm risking per trade. That's what it's called, the size. The symbol, which is the currency pair, the price at which I bought the symbol, right? There's no SL here, there's no TP, because I didn't put them. But if there was a stop loss, it'll be here. If there was a TP, it'd be there. I will place another trade, uh, maybe later, with, an, with a stop loss and a take profit, okay? Now, this price right here is the current price. All right, don't worry about commission, don't worry about swap for now. Most importantly, where it says profit. As you can clearly see, it says minus 19 or minus $24, it keeps changing. That basically tracks how much my trade is either making me or losing me, okay? So currently, currently not going well, right? Minus $48. Now next to that is a small X. If I put my cursor on the X, it says close, right? So if I wanted to close this trade, I would just go and click on the X. So let's go and do that. Okay, so I've closed the trade. I closed it at a loss. That's why my balance and my equity and my free margin has changed by the, by the loss amount. If you saw it was 3,000 for all three amounts. Now it's minus the, minus the small loss that I just took. Okay, so that's under the trade tab. So if you've got trades running on your platform, they will be under your terminal, under the trade tab, okay? Second most important thing I said was account history. Account history basically lists every single trade that you take on your live or your demo account, okay? Now, this is the trade, as you can clearly see. There's the loss, there's the new balance, okay? So, trade, current trades that are running, account history, basically that, the history of all your trades that you've taken. Okay, whether they made you money or they lost you money, it'll be there. All right. If you want to print your statement for some, for example, I will ask you guys for, for statements. If you wanted to print one, 
you can just sort of highlight any one of those trades, right click on it. And as you can see, you can view your history. It says all history. You can view last three months, last month, or you can customize the period. You can only look at trades from this week, or you can look at trades from as long as you want, okay? Depending on how long you've been trading your account. Uh, but if it says save as report, you would go and save the report there, and then it'll save automatically on your desktop, okay? That's how you get a statement of your, of your account. Not important for now. Just wanted to make sure that you guys knew about the terminal tab. Okay, since we don't need it, we're also gonna close it, right? Okay, now, these are your charts. There's four of them now, as you can clearly see. But have a look at the bottom here. They are also listed at the bottom there, right? So that if I were to maximize one of these charts, for example, just the Euro USD, that's the only thing on my chart right now. But all my other open charts are at the bottom here. So if I wanted to change and look at another currency pair, I would just have to go and click on it down here. It'll change, change, and change. Okay, so you will see or you will notice with most of our of our accounts or rather with most of our platforms, us the older guys or the experienced guys or the guys that have been trading the longest, we will have about 10, 12, maybe even 21 pairs open down here. Okay, and that's how we keep track of what's going on with all of our pairs. All right, unfortunately, you guys cannot ask questions. You just have to watch and listen, right? Like I said, I'll make the recording available to you guys at a later stage. Okay, so let's go ahead and set up your, let's go ahead and set up your platform. You don't want it to be green like this. You want your candles to be red and green and you want your background to be a clear solid black. Okay, so this is what you do to get that. In the middle of your chart, you can just right click you will see this window pop up. First thing you need to get rid of is the grid. The grid are these squares. So you go down to the middle of that block, you click on grid, it'll take the squares away. Okay. Second, you don't want the CCI thing at the bottom here. So all you can do is you can just sort of right click inside that window and then it'll say delete indicator window. Okay, the CCI is what is called an indicator that we don't use so you don't need it. If you delete that, it'll just leave your, your chart. Okay, so now let's go ahead and set up your candles. Right click again. Same grid will appear. Go all the way down to the bottom where it says properties. Click on that. And then this is how you set up your candles. Just four things you need to set up. Where it says bar up, you're gonna leave that as a lime. Everything going up is green. Uh, we are going to use lime because the lime is a clearer green against a black background. Okay. Bar down. Anything going down is the color red. So we're going to go ahead and change that. And then bull candle. If you remember correctly, anything bullish is going up. Bullish market. You're going to go ahead and make that the same color as bar up, which is lime. And then a bear candle is going down. Same color as bar down. Red. So once those are set up, if you look to the left here, you can clearly see that your candles are now green and red. You can go ahead and click OK. Okay, so your candles are now set up the way that you want them to. The next thing that you want, okay, let's just quickly change the time frame here. Let's go to the H1, it's the same thing. And I'm just gonna make this a bit smaller as well. Okay, so these are my candles, and this is my screen. This is how they look now. Now, Next, what you wanna do is you wanna separate your charts into days, okay? You wanna make sure that you separate it into days. How you do that is you go Control Y on your, on your laptop. So press Control and Y. It'll put these vertical lines going down for you. That separates the, that separates the days, okay? So this is today, which is Thursday. This is yesterday, which is Wednesday, Tuesday, Monday. Okay. So that's what that does. Control Y. Now, if you go and look at all your other pairs, they are still not set up the way that you want them to. Okay. You can go ahead and do the same thing that you did on the other pair. Or what you can do is just below that file view insert line, there's that one with new order and all the rest of them. That second line, if you go all the way to the end, 
If you put your cursor on top of that last tab, it says templates, you're gonna click on that one. And then you are going to save a template, okay? So whatever changes I did to my, to my platform on this particular pair, which is a USB JPY, I'm gonna save that as a template, okay? So I am gonna name it Menzi template. Missing a P. Uh, man, the template one. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and save it. So once I've saved my template, if I want to set up my chart on any other currency pair, all I have to do is go to the currency pair, GBP USD, and then I have to go back to templates, click on that, and then click on the template that I just created and saved. If I click on it it'll automatically set up my chart for me, okay? So I can do this for pretty much all my charts, no matter how many of them it is. Uh, just go ahead, click the template, put it up, it'll set up my, it'll set up my chart for me, right? It's for the lazy people, but it's pretty convenient. Okay, so you can create a template, so you can create as many templates as you want. Uh, I am going to make one template available to you guys, the one template you're all supposed to be using. Okay, I'll make sure that it's up on the Telegram channel, if not tomorrow by this weekend. Everybody's screen should look pretty much the same. Okay. All right, so your template is saved, very important, so your candles are set up. All right, now, before we even start analyzing, right, what you want to have Okay, if you don't want this information at the top here, you see that one that keeps flickering here? If you don't want it, next to your USD, it says that small little arrow. You see where if I put my cursor on it, it says hide trade panel. I can just click on it and it'll take that away. If I want it back, I click on it and it comes back. Okay, you don't really need it when you're trading, so you can go ahead and, and hide that. You wanna pretty much make sure that you give yourself as much real estate as possible. So what that means is, to analyze properly, you do not want anything interfering with your charts. You want as much of the screen space available to just look at your chart. Okay, so whatever you don't need, you can go ahead and take off your, take that off your chart. Okay. All right, so now let's pretty much discuss what's going on up here. That is called your toolbar. Okay, all the information here, that is your toolbar. Okay, I will show you what you need to, uh, what you need to use the most. Uh, everything else you can pretty much ignore for now, you don't need. Okay, so let's start at the top. If you click on file, this is what you have, okay? Once your demo account is set up, you don't really need to use the file tab for anything, okay? If you go to view, everything that I took off my chart when we started, my Market watch, my navigator, my terminal, that's where you find it. Okay. All right. Now, there are other things that I need to show you here. You see where it says view and it says toolbars? If I click on toolbars, as you can clearly see, standard charts, line studies, time frames, everything is ticked. That means my toolbar is set up the way that I need it set up. However, if I were to go and untick standard, as you can clearly see, some information in my toolbar is now missing. If, if it's not all ticked, that means it's not all on your chart. You want everything under toolbars ticked so that everything is there, okay? So that's your toolbar. I'll show you exactly what you need to know under your toolbar. Your status bar. If I go ahead and click on status bar, it takes away all the information at the bottom. So sometimes if you don't know if your demo or your platform is connected or not, and you can't tell because that thing at the bottom right is not there anymore. You just need to go to view, click on status bar. It'll pop back up here. Okay, you wanna make sure that that thing is connected and it's got numbers running. That's how you know your platform is connected to the internet. Okay, it's very important because sometimes what happens with internet connections is it, you might lose connection and you're not, you're not, you don't really realize that you have. That's where you go to check your connection status. Okay, you don't want to find yourself in a situation where you've got trades running and you don't know whether they're, you're connected to the internet or not. All right, always want to make sure that that's there so you can see. Okay, next, charts bar. 
If I click on charts bar, it takes all the charts at the bottom away. Remember I had four of them open. Now they're not there anymore. I get a lot of people calling me panicking saying I had set up all my charts, 21 of them. I'd worked so hard with my analysis. Now they're all gone. I don't know where to go to find them. If you click on view, charts bar, they'll all appear at the bottom again. Okay. All right. Now, market watch. If you need to find currency pairs, you can click on market watch. If you click on market watch, it'll pop up here. Close that because we don't need it. If you go to navigator, click on it, it'll pop up on the left. Don't really need it when you trade. Terminal, there it is, right? Okay, if you've got trades running on your terminal and you wanna keep an eye on the profit, if you double click on the trade tab, if I double click on it, you see what it does with my, with my terminal? It takes it away, but it still shows me that. It still shows me money down here. So for example, if I were to go ahead and place a trade again here, and maybe so, there you go. See what's happening here? If I double click on it, there's my trade, it's running. If I want more space because my terminal is taking up space, I can just double click on any of these tabs. And as you can clearly see, you see my profit, it's still running. So you can keep an eye on what's going on with your trades down here without, inter without it interfering with your, with your workspace. Okay. All right, so that's pretty much what you need to know under the view tab. Insert, if you wanna insert any indicators, that's where you'll go. Uh, I'll show you exactly which indicators to use. Under charts, if you wanna change the different charts, bar chart, candlestick, line chart, that's where you go. Zoom in, zoom out, that's where you go, you'll find that. Under tools, if you wanna place a new order, that's where you can go as well. Window, okay, if I've got four pairs running here and I wanna look at all of them at the same time, I can come to the window tab and I can actually click on tile windows. What it'll do is it'll show me all four of my charts at the same time, okay? Or I can go to Windows again and I can click on Tile vertically. It'll show me all my charts vertically. Everybody see that? So on my EURUSD chart, I have a trade running, which is a cell right here, but I can still keep an eye out on all the other trades that I have running, on all the other pairs, on all the other currency pairs that I have open, okay? So for example, if I only have two pairs that I'm watching, I can go ahead and close. Okay, I can go ahead and close this one, close that one. Okay, then go back to window. And if I tile them vertically, it'll only show me the two. Okay, so that's another way that you can keep tabs on what's going on on your other chart while this one is running as well. Okay. All right, now below that first line, second line or that first line of your toolbar. If you put your cursor on each one of these things, it says create a new chart, you don't ever need to use that. Second one, profiles, you don't need to use that. Third one, it says market watch again. Same thing that you can find under view, that's where it is. That's your data window, your navigator, your terminal, it's all here, okay? Strategy tester is something you can use if you want to test the strategy, if you want the platform to do it for you automatically. Strategy tester, right? You can use that. Most important thing on that line of your toolbar where it says new order. That is where you go if you need to place a trade. Okay. Under new order, you see it's got the symbol, the volume, stop loss, take profit, whether you sell or you, or you buy. That's where you go to place trades. I will place trades with you guys and I'll show you exactly how it works. Okay, auto trading, if you've got, like I talked about EAs, your robots, that's where you go to enable them or disable them. Okay, important next to auto trading. Next tab, bar chart. So if you wanna change from candlestick charts and you wanna use bar charts, that's where you'd go. If I click on bar chart, you see that it's changed my chart. It's not candlesticks anymore. Okay, 
candlesticks in the middle. If you go to the right with a line chart, it's just one line that connects uh, your closing prices, right? We, however, use candlestick charts. So if you go to candlesticks, it'll pop your candlesticks up on the chart for you. Okay. Another very important feature, very useful, is your zoom in and your zoom out tabs. So if I click on the zoom in, it makes my candles bigger. Okay, that's as big as I can get them. If I click on the zoom out tab, it makes my candles smaller and that's as small as I can make them. Okay, the smaller you make them, the more data you can fit into your chart. Okay, the bigger you make them, the less data you're gonna be able to see in your chart. Okay, if you leave them here, it's fine. Okay. All right, now next to that, obviously, is your arrange windows. I showed you how to use that. Next two tabs, this one. This one you don't really use. This one, however, is important. It says shift end of the chart from right border. If I click on that once, it shifts my chart away from my border on the right. Everybody see that my chart was all the way here? I want to shift it here, okay? So that I don't have to see my candlesticks next to the price. I don't want any information next to my current candlestick because that's the one that's important that I need to keep an eye on, right? That one right there. So if you click on it again, it'll shift it all the way to the right. I, however, prefer that you shift it to the left just a tad. Make sure you give yourself enough room to see what's going on. Okay. All right, so we've got 10 minutes left in the session. I will do another one where I will be showing you how to place trades only, okay? All right, hope you guys don't have any questions yet. Okay, indicator list. Since we won't really be using any indicators, you don't need to use that. Periods, not really. Other one that's important is your, your template style, right? That's where you go to change templates and choose whichever one you wanna use. All right, below that is your, they call this the, tell you now, it's the line studies tab, okay? If you wanna draw lines on your chart, that's where you go. Okay, lines are very important to the way that we trade. Okay, don't really use the cursor. You already have it here, there it is. The second, tab under that part of your toolbar is very important. That is your crosshair. You use the crosshair to count pips. Okay. So for example, if I wanted to know how many pips it was between that price and that price, the easiest thing to do is for me to grab my crosshair. So I go ahead and click on crosshair once, and then I drag my crosshair to the point where I want to start right there at the bottom. You want to hold your crosshair down by clicking on the left of your mouse. So now that I've held it down, I can now drag it all the way up to the top, right? Okay, now, the numbers that you wanna pay attention to when counting pips are the ones in the middle, okay? The 21 at the beginning, that's the number of candles between that one at the bottom and that one at the top, okay? That's how many candles are there between those two prices. The second numbers after the slash, or after the forward slash, those are the pips. Okay. Now, it currently says 2311, which is 2,311. Those are micro pips or pipettes. Everybody remember pipettes? Okay. So this is what you do. You always drop the last number. So if it's four numbers like that, in reality, you're gonna drop that last one and the pips are now 231. Okay, that is how you count pips. You can use that between any two points. Take my card, say if I wanna count the pips between here and here, same thing. Instead of that being 1,190, it's only 119 pips. Okay, crosshair, very important. All right, next to the crosshair, equally important, draw a vertical line. If you need to draw a vertical line on your chart, you go and you click once on your vertical line, and then you go and put that crosshair thing exactly where you want it drawn, 
and then you click just once, it'll draw a vertical line for you down your chart. Okay. To remove it, you can double click on the charts. You see these white dots here, it means it's highlighted. And then you right click and go delete, or you just do it again. You can just backspace. If you click on backspace on your, on your keyboard, it'll remove it as well. Okay, now, very, very important is your horizontal line. Okay, you need to know exactly how to use or how to draw vertical lines or horizontal lines on your chart. It's very, very important. Okay, same thing. You go there, you click once, and you put that crosshair thing exactly where you want to draw the line, okay? And then you click once, it'll draw a, ho a horizontal line for you across your chart. Okay, same rules apply to remove it. You can just backspace. Very important though, in terms of using your horizontal lines. It's very important to know how to do that. Okay, you might not use this much, but it's equally important to know is your trend line. So this is how you draw a trend line, same thing. Trend line allows you to draw diagonal lines on your chart, okay? Also very important. There's your trend line. If I wanted to draw a line basically Okay, hold on, it's not doing what I want. So you click on the trend line and then you put it exactly where you wanna start drawing the line from. So for example, if I wanted to draw a line connecting all these high points here, this is what I do, right? So now my trend line has been drawn. However, notice that it goes beyond where I want it to. So this is how you set it up. You double click on it, highlight it. You see those white dots on it? Right click, go to trend line properties, go to parameters, and then you wanna untick that box that says ray. So if you untick the box, what it does is it shortens your trend line and that allows you to draw a trend line as long or as short as you want. See now I can put it exactly there or I can shorten it and put it here. It allows me to pretty much use my trend line exactly how I want. If I only want to draw a line between that point and that point, I can now do that. Okay. All right. Backspace, remove it. Okay. Before we run out of time in this session, this is very important. Your M1, M5, M15, M30, these are your time frames. Okay. These are your time frames. Now, since it's already on the H1 time frame. This basically means each candle that you are looking at on this chart is a one hour candle. Okay. If I go to the H4 time frame, each candle that I'm looking at is a four hour candle. Okay. If I go to the M30, each candle is 30 minutes. M15, each candle is a 15 minute candle. All right. Now, the time frames that are of most importance to us and the way that we trade the method is your H4, your H1, and your M15. We use the M15 to take our trades. We use it for entries. That is where we go and look to enter our trades. Okay. But when we analyze the charts, we'll start with the H4. We'll look at the H1 as well. And we'll then take our trades on the 15 minutes. So if you're looking for patterns, you use the H4 and the H1. Okay. All right, cool. I've been talking for the better part of 45 minutes. All right, so this is what we're gonna do. We are gonna take a 10 minute break. Uh, well, at least I need a break. I've been talking for too long. All right, so we're gonna take a break. I will have another code for you guys in the next 10 minutes. I will show you exactly how to place trades on your platform. I think for a lot of you guys, that's the one thing that you want more than anything else, right? Okay, so like I said, I'll make the recorded session available on the Telegram channel. I'll post the instructions on the WhatsApp groups. And yeah, so you can find this and you can play it again, listen to it again, and figure out how to set up your platform the way you want it to. Okay, so 10 minutes, it's 10 minutes after nine, 10 minutes, search yourself out, do what you need to do. I'll give you guys another code in 10 minutes, okay? And then we'll do a couple of examples of how to place trades with stop losses and all those things. Okay? All right, 10 minutes, guys.